For those of you who've just joined us. Okay. Okay. How exciting for you. We are here with Terry McGovern, who has told me, no hand gestures, that he is a legend in his own mind. I was saying goodbye to my to my former producer at KSAN, a very, very integral part of my uh, legend in my own mind, Hank London. Bye, Hank. So, yes, I uh, got started as a kid. I was uh, working on, uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, PA, got a job outside of Pittsburgh, great little jazz station, WKPA, and uh, the, the brother, uh, the guy who ran it is was the brother of the program director at KSFO, so they would correspond, and of course Al Newman, the KSFO guy, the older brother, would send back these gems, these comedic gems with Sherwood and, and Carter B. Smith and all the wonderful people that they had. And I remember I'm 19 years old and I'm just salivating. What would it be like to work on a personality-driven radio station? And uh, as it turned out, I, I applied myself, worked very hard, and there was an opening doing the all-night show on KDKA, my hometown station. And I don't know how many KRI, KRE people or, or West Coast people are going to get upset about this, but the first station in the world was KDKA in Pittsburgh. I can get one of these from a guy with a camera. Must mean something. All right, so uh, uh, I, I did the all-night show, went to the Army, and when I was in the Army, at the, right at the end, when I was getting out, I called Al Newman, and I said, Al, this is Terry McGovern. I'm your brother Phil's favorite DJ, or whatever I said to him. <laughs> and I said, you know, bullets are going off, and I said, <laughs> he said, where the hell are you? I said, I'm on the, uh, on the field here at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. He says, well, come out. I got a problem. And what had happened was uh, Dan Sorkin, who was their uh, midday guy, one of the funniest human beings who ever lived, and uh, was in a motorcycle accident, very serious, lost his leg. And this guy, you can't see him out of frame, but Carter B. Smith had decided to quit radio and become a, uh, a stockbroker. So suddenly, two of their major guys are gone. And they want to bring me in to do the all nights. I said, <laughs> please. I, so but that's that, what you wanted. No, I didn't want the all nights. Oh, my God, no. I had done it for three years at KDKA. Yeah. You don't want to live like that. Not a young man. <laughs> Not for a young man. You wanted to be all night for different reasons. Yes. yes I understand. You would be rolling in about that time. <laughs> so anyway, I got middays, and then another shocking, strange, catastrophic thing happened. Don Sherwood quit yet again. And I drew the short straw, went in there, and did that show for a year and a half. Lost most of my hair. That's why I'm forced to wear hats now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is thanks to Don Sherwood. See what he did? The bastard. <laughs> we, actually, Don and I became real good friends uh, not long before he died. It was just uh, one of those things where, uh, I, you know, I finally, uh, we resolved a lot of old issues and... Uh, Oh, what an amazing guy he was. He well, to, really to come was. up in his shadow was... Uh... Then I went to k and did mornings there, had my own slice of morning show success uh, because no one was doing craziness on FM in the morning. This but, is... but let me take it back for a yes. second. Were you always funny? Did yes. you know that you were funny? Or yes. Were you like the, the class clown? Yes. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and believe me, I have failed miserably. Well, that's what I want, uh, because it takes so much confidence to get up there yeah. and take that risk, because the joke might not be funny. But remember who's the brunt of every joke you tell. You are. You, if you don't get that, if you don't understand that it's because of your particular unique in, uh, uh, idiocy that you have a particular <laughs> point of view. That's a way to look at it. Yeah, I mean, so, so, so it, it's great if you can, you know, uh, cut on other people, make fun of other people. But take Lewis Black. Lewis Black is a brilliant, brilliant satirist, and he knows how to just skewer everybody. But he himself is mentally unstable. So and he says so many nice things about you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, th I think people who who think they're funny anyway, uh, just they, they don't know what else to do. No, I, I just admire it. I, I think it really takes skill and talent to be able to to be that funny. Well, yeah, it, it takes persistence. I'll say that. And let me tell you something. My wife is ill. Uh, and she's doing okay right now, uh, but she's ill, and we're doing uh, some research into a, uh, a study by a guy named Norman Cousins years ago who got cancer and pres prescribed for himself funny movies. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We watch a funny movie every night we possibly can and laugh, and you can't help but feel better. So that's why I have no, I'm sorry, that's why I have no place on radio today because I have, n I have a political point of view 
that has no basis in reality. <laughs> I don't know why I like the things I do, but I do. So I can't get on the air like a Ron Owens and discuss issues. I just can't. But so I'm waiting for radio to come back well, the way it used to be. It's, we're going to bring it back. But, All right. but you've been in, in <clears throat> movies? Movies, and made you, some you movies. You were talking about this earlier, so tell us about that. Uh, first movie was The Candidate, shot right up here in Oakland or Emeryville, and uh, I, I, I was an extra. In the, in the end of it, it says, in the, it was called The Candidate, Michael Ritchie, great, great Bay Area actor, has passed away, uh, directed Downhill Racer with Redford, and then did this thing, The Candidate. Uh, and uh, it was modeled after a number of different young up-and-coming Democrats. Uh, so I, I spent a day or, or two uh, in a crowd scene, <laughs> I guess playing a reporter. I don't know what I was doing there, but I, and at the end of it, it says Terry McGovern himself. <laughs> wow. I didn't even get a character name. <laughs> Couldn't I have been reporter number one at least? So then the next thing was American Graffiti, and that was done with a lot of chutzpah told the story out there, I'll do it quickly. Uh, 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 George Lucas had listened to me on the air on KSFO 7 to 7.30. I did an oldies but goodies show. And I did a fake voice and I did two voices. The guy's name was Richie Vitola. He was my mechanic. And he would come into the studio, hey, hi Terry, I got it. And he would play these 45s. And Lucas loved it and wanted me to be a disc jockey in this new movie he was making about cruising. I'm not sure what he meant by that cruising. Okay, mm -hmm. car cru oh car cruising. Okay, <laughs> in the valley. Got it. And so I and this is what when you're young, Cheryl, and have more chutzpah than sense. I said I don't want to play it. Mind you, he's just he's just this little guy, George Lucas, kid my age. Not you know? a big name. Or not anything, a big name. He's got right. the curly hair and yeah. sitting there and the plaid shirt, always with the plaid shirts. And I said I don't want to play a disc jockey. I am a disc jockey. And Fred Roos, the producer, brought me and went, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with you? And George ever batted an eye. He says, okay, well then read for this part, Mr. Wolf. I got to do it. A wolf man came in. I think, didn't they shoot it over here? I think, I think They so. shot it right yeah, here. Yeah. That scene with the popsicles that Wolfman did, I mean, that's still, it still makes me cry every time I watch it. So that's how I got in, by being nervy. Do a character. Uh, from... Well, okay, I'll do a character. For, I, do, uh, I, I do a lot of voices, uh, and that's kind of my mainstay. I teach acting, Marin Actors Workshop, or just go to marinactors.com. I am doing something that we wouldn't call a living. I'm doing a weekend morning show on Boss Boss Radio. I can hear people scrambling to write this down. I'll wait. <laughs> Boss Boss Radio. Boss twice. BossBossRadio.com. And I'm on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Uh, ben Fong Torres is on on Sunday afternoons. And what time is that? And I'm on 7 to 10. He's and, on 7 to 10. And I do kind of my old style. I do shtick, I do phone stuff and all that, but I play mostly this music that came from this era, that came from late 60s through about 1980. And it's a beautiful mix. Uh, and I also uh, uh, render voices for video games. And I got a call recently that, uh, from Disney. And I'll tell you, my friend, when the big mouse calls you, you pick up that phone. That's right. Fast. <laughs> Mickey, what's up? <laughs> hey, Char. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they said there are. I was on a, a show that is now the childhood memory of a whole generation of kids who are in the video game industry. Ducktales and Darkwing Duck. So, so uh, you know, I grew up. Uh, they grew up with this uh, Ducktales, and it was a huge hit. And it was a good job being on those two series. We must have done 150 shows. Now they're bringing back the video game, so I had to go into San Francisco on the phone patch with Disney and do this, uh, this new version of DuckTales. So I'll do my Duck... I'll, my, okay, ready? That, do you know DuckTales? That was a nice setup. Thank you. I'm a professional. You are a highly trained professional. With enormous ears. Yes, okay. we, we'll talk about the ears in a moment. Can we get a close-up? <laughs> There's no way you can't get a close-up. And when I went into audition, they said they were looking for a cross between John Ratzenberger and... and uh, John Ratzenberger, who was in Cheers, and Jack Burns who for one year replaced Barney Fife on the Mayberries. You remember him? Huh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. And so that's the voice they wanted, and I did it, and I got the job. And, uh, and, and I would, now I go into these, these recording sessions, video games, they go, do lunch pad. All right, you have $5, I mean something. <laughs> hey little buddy, how you doing? And these grown men with beards, this, like kids, they start laughing and squealing, so. I'm happy that they're happy. It's renewed income. It's, it worked out okay. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, 
Pick, what, what is your favorite character? Well, I did, uh, 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 partially did the voice of uh, Vito Corleone in, in the Godfather video game. Mm. Look how they massacred my son. I want you to use all your powers. Uh, that, various and sundry other voices. I, oh, well, uh, immortality. Okay. Something we're striving for, right? Well. We're striving for the paycheck, okay. the next paycheck. I, I was saying, that. I'm just striving for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> In 1974, uh, uh, George Lucas in invited me over to his house oh, in San Oh, excuse Soma. that name you dropped. Now he's famous. Now, now he's, he's famous. Now you go to his house well, and you he's tell famous. people about it. But he's, yeah, but he's, oh, pardon me. He's, that is really sharp sound. Pardon me, uh, Chief. I know the Chief Engineer doesn't like that. Um, I, yeah, he had, and now he had American graffiti under his belt, so he was a little bit bigger deal. He was a little taller. His feet didn't quite hit the floor yet at that desk, but he was... So I, I ca he called me and he says, get some voice actors together, because I had worked on THX 1138 doing random voices. I was the voice of the confession machine. What's wrong? What's wrong? Take two red pills. Uh, so I, I got a bunch of actors, uh, Scott Beach, the immortal Scott Beach, Ger Jerry Walters, president of AFTRA, and a bunch of really great guys, Morgan Upton from the committee. And we went over to George's screening room sat on these ottomans and Ben Burt, the great Ben Burt who would go on to win 20 some Oscars, is walking around doing this with us and we had just little sheets of paper show and we go, what, what are we doing? Okay, I, we said, is there anything we can see to this new movie you made? He says, well all I have is this and he showed us that 90 second open or it was the only trailer they had for it of the Death Star exploding and then the lights went up again. We said, that's it? Okay, so it's some kind of outer space deal. And we did all the voices of the stormtroopers for that first film. Wow. Two years later, Cheryl, I'm in, I'm in L.A., living in L.A., and a guy at a radio station, uh, general manager, asked me to a screening. I go to the screening in the middle of the afternoon, and I hear my voice coming out of this gigantic <laughs> color masterpiece, and I'm talking to Alec Guinness. I'm the guy that says, these are not the droids we're looking for. Move along. Do you know how many cheese ball introductions that's gotten me at video game companies? <laughs> You're the guy that said that. And I was. But here's the thing. George, a couple of years ago, decided when he did, he wanted to remix it all. So he took all of the Stormtroopers' voices out of A New Hope and replaced them with one actor, the guy who played Bubba Fett. And? I'm done. I'm toast. I was going to live on forever. Now you have to get the collector's edition. <laughs> and it's worth it. My kids have copies of that, so <laughs> that's all I need. I'm, I'm happy. I haven't done a movie in a long time. Last one was uh, Nine Months, which unfortunately wasn't a box office hit at all because very soon after we made that, Hugh Grant, the star, had an incident down in Hollywood. I do recall that. Yeah. I wasn't there. I wasn't I was, either. But uh, oh, no. I heard there. about it. But <laughs> I still love Jay Leno's line when he came on television after that. Thing. And he sat down the table and says, what were you thinking? Yes. But the movie before that was Mrs. Doubtfire, and that has made everybody a lot of money. Every so often I get a nice check from it. Still, as you know, residuals decrease. Oh. But that show has had so many different uh, distributions, and it was such a raging hit. And it, it, it defines to me who Robin Williams is as, as a genius comedian. I, I, don't think, I don't know if anybody could ever surpass that. Did, did you enjoy that? I love that movie. I, I think that you, as I'm listening to you, you just keep reinventing yourself. You have the energy of a young man. I don't know where it comes from it's either. It's fantastic. Uh, drugs are no longer a part of my life. So that's not working for you? No, that didn't work out. Um, <laughs> no, cause I'm like, I'll take, I'll take a little hit of reefer and a glass of wine now and again. <laughs> it's just a different kind of drug now. <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> reefer. Uh, but no, I don't know what it is. It's just a drive I have. I and I think it's what put me in, in good stead to be a morning man because I could wake up fast. I don't wake up as fast anymore. And now it's more like 10 o'clock, you know. But uh, I, I, I'm just very blessed and I'm very happy that I feel this good at this age. You have so many things going on, though. I mean, you're still involved with a number of projects. Yes. So tell us about that. Oh, uh, well, okay. We started There's, to talk about a few of them. We, we just finished the DuckTales game. Uh, I'm, I'm working with a company in San Rafael. You know, voice, I, I train voice actors, and I tell them, you know, in, in this day and age, if you're looking to be doing commercial voiceovers, mm -hmm. 
uh, it's going to take a long time. You're going to really have to uh, get in with the right agent. You're going to have to have all the right things happen, all the, all the lux, uh, lucky things happen. And most of the work is still in L.A., always has been. You know, There are local commercials done for sure, but the big network stuff comes out of L.A., Chicago, and New York. And yet there is a real oasis here in, in the Bay Area, and that is the number of video game companies that crop up every day. Every time I go online, there's another one at the bottom of the list. And they're making games, and they are selling for more than movie tickets do. And the work, uh, unfortunately, we don't get residuals. With so it. it's a one-time fee? It's a one-time fee. You get bought out, and <laughs> they use you and throw you away. Sometimes they bring you back. This Telltale company in San Rafael is doing a video game version of The Walking Dead. And what they do is they don't put it on all the different platforms, you know, Xbox and Nintendo and all that. They put it on the Internet and charge you a subscription. So it's like the Saturday Evening Post or something. You're paying a subscription and getting these episodes every week. And then at the end of the month, you start a new subscription. And they're cranking out. Wonder, and it's acting. I mean, it's real voice acting. It's not just going in and doing a trick voice or something, you know. Yeah. Push my belly button and I'll throw up on you. <laughs> you know. But it's actual acting. You play parts. It's just, I, I'm listening to your voice and it's so resonant. And it, so it's like, I think you should be back on the radio with your own show every day. Aren't you sweet? Resonant. Have you heard those resonant. guys out yeah, the big on the voices, stage? Yeah. I mean, frightening. I love the radio voices. Yeah, they're I, big. But, but I never you, had one of those. I was going to say, did you ever train for that at all? No, it just, I... It just came I, naturally? I, yeah, because I knew I wanted to be on the radio. I knew that the way I spoke as a kid in Pittsburgh, if there's any Pittsburghers here, it is the most horrible accent in the American language. And, it's talk up in here like this here, and you, you totally can barely understand. So that's it's like some form you, of cotton. But cotton. That's, this is where you got your voice training, basically, was undoing that? I'm not going to do that, is what I said. <laughs> and I listened to radio, and I was a typical nerd radio kid who, you know, started imitating Gary Owens and Dave Garraway. Oh, my God. Peace. Uh, so I wanted to do that. I wanted to be a guy on electronic media. And uh, I, I, I'm blessed because, you know, I, I have kids who are finally figuring out what they're doing in their 20s, which is great. That's perfect. One's a cop, one's a nurse. And, uh, That's so nice. They're in public service. Yes, they are. Steady work. And they're not living with you. What makes you think that, Cheryl? Oh, <laughs> let, <laughs> no, me, no, let I me should. take that back. Then. No, no, no. no, here's what the deal is. Uh, Brendan, the, Brendan, the older boy, and his wife have lived with us, with us for the past several months, which is great because with my wife's health, uh, it's been a great help. They are now moving uh, to, uh, to their home up in, in, in Petaluma, but the uh, younger boy who's studying for nursing is still in college, is entitled to his room. Does this mean that you need to keep working? <laughs> it okay. never ran. He's still available. I Oh, yeah, am I available? You've Did I mention Boss Boss Ray? <laughs> Did you mention your book? Oh, no, I, because I don't have a title yet. I, I, I'm That's thinking right. of voiceover breadcrumbs, but it's too precious. <laughs> it's just too precious. But it's a story of, of how I just started doing it. It's just a little memoir. It'll be self-published, I'm sure, and available on my website, I hope, uh, in the fall. Is that general enough? That's good enough. It, it, it's getting there. But so, thank you for asking, because that kind of gives mm, me an impetus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ben Fong... Fong <laughs> That's another voice. <clears throat> ben Fong Torres <laughs> has written, I don't know, like 10 books. Have you talked to... You've talked to Ben. We talked to Ben, and Ben says it's a struggle, especially when you have family issues, but you, the discipline that you have to have to do a book. Yeah, yeah. It's not... Is it anything like the kind of preparation you have to do for your comedic acts? Or for your radio shows, or I the mean, writing? Is there, yeah, is there? No, because I'm using. I, I do, I've never been a professional writer. My father was, but when I write, it's like okay, <laughs> every I, I push everything away, and that that's tough because you know the, the the tide will always come back in. So the new discipline is at a certain time in the morning, I put in one hour, and it always works into ninety minutes or two hours. So I'm getting a lot done, but yeah, that is the discipline. My father used to stare at this. Underwood typewriter for hours on end. You know? You're not using that typewriter, are you? I wish I had it, though. <laughs> I wish I had it. That was a that was a beauty, the old Underwood. You don't do um, handwriting. You're you're doing computer, right? I mean, some uh, people like that old school stuff. I, I'm left-handed, so it's questionable if I'm going to be able to read it when I'm finished with it. Uh, I, I I'm pretty good with the, the typing, thanks to the spell check. You know, I don't I don't go back and correct anything. But have you tried uh, Dragon Speak yet? 
I've heard about it. It's a voice thing. Yeah. yeah. I saw a gal on television the other day advertising. It ain't that easy. <laughs> it's never that easy. You know, when you get the stuff home. The, does it change your words? It does change your words. It does. It's like that auto write in, on, in your uh, on your text. Yes, it says inappropriate things. I did, it really does. It gets you in tr I've gotten in trouble with some of that you stuff. You said what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but it, it is, I'm, I'm trying it. What, you have to train it. You have to train the program to your voice. So if you wake up or you turn it on one day and you're not in that same mood, and you start talking fast, it goes <laughs> it starts spewing out letters. But you have so many great things in your great experiences that you want to try to capture and, and lessons for people. I mean, you are a great teacher. So what are some of the things sure, that you, you want to talk about in your book? I want to talk about the idea that everybody gets at least once in her life. Uh, notice I didn't say his and or her. I refuse to do that anymore. How about you? Isn't that awful that we don't have a word for that? It's your interview. You can do what you want. Okay. So uh, people want to be actors. I think at some point everybody in our culture thinks about being an actor. And what I try to do at the Marin Actors Workshop is to meet people as they come in the door. People are saying, well, what system do you teach? Are you uh, Meisner or Stella? Well, I studied with Stella Adler, so I, I stole a lot mm -hmm. from her. But I work with people as they come in the door. If you're a, a middle-aged person who has raised a family and you used to act in college and you come back, I can get those, I can clean those carburetors off for you. <laughs> because what we do is we get people up and working right away and we give them an enormous amount of support. I am not a nasty acting teacher. You know, one of those, what do you think you're doing? Turning your back on the audience. But you do want to do that. Though. No, I don't. Oh, well, you're, wait, you're, 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 right. Want to do you're that. right. There is a little of that. <laughs> Come on already, right? Mr. President, <laughs> if I may. <laughs> but no, I don't have tenure. Only guys with tenure can be nasty. Okay. <laughs> But I, I just enc I encourage people to, uh, to come over and, and try us out. We're going to put a new improv class in. Uh, Marin Actors Workshop or just marinactors.com. That's my home base. That's where I teach twice a night. And I also teach at the College of Marin. Wow. So, uh, do they get work from that? Or do they just I have get, a good time? I get actors from that <laughs> that go into my, my acting class. And those people who then stay with me and make demos, I'm batting about of those people that come with me and make demos with the understanding... You come, you get the training, we'll pull a copy of the scripts, we'll do it. I'll make a beautiful production out of it. It's still up to you to get the agent. It's still up to you to market yourself. I mean, it's wonderful when you're working for a station because they're marketing you all the time. When that goes away, you, you really do have to reinvent yourself every day. And websites mm -hmm. are great for that, so we're lucky there. You're, you started to talk I have about 15% success rate with the people who I make demos for actually get agents and I think that's pretty good. That's very good considering yeah. how competitive yeah. the business is. You, you met so many people in your life who were able to hold a room <sighs> with their comedy genius. I bet there are many that you'd like well, to Well Robin's about. the top of the list. Yeah. Robin absolutely is the top of the list. Funny people. Um, uh, yeah, geez, God there's so many of them. Mark Pitta over at the Throckmorton in Mill Valley. Okay, talk about energy. He just keeps going and going and has the great Tuesday night success. Dana Carvey, I adore Dana Carvey. Saw him the other day, just in the mall somewhere. Uh, I, I, I admire greatly people who can get up in front of people and make them enjoy themselves and make them relaxed. And uh, that's why I want to get back to it. I'm working on a one-man show that I hope I get to take to the marsh. All of my stuff is just gestating. Can I come back when it... But see, the now, that, now the, that you're committed on this interview... That's right, I've made it. You have made the commitment. And this audience is going to be looking forward to seeing your Who's work. Who's going to see this? We don't know. We don't know. This could go viral. It could. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I feel a little viral today. I don't just... Should I sit back? It could have been the chili out there. I don't know. We need new medicine for you? No. Okay. Cheryl, what about you? Uh, uh, do, let's, let's go back to you. Okay. Because this is your interview. Because... I. I want people who are watching this, and this is also for for our audience in the future, your comedic genius, your particular comedic genius, it just keeps evolving. And Ben Fong Torres, I, I watched him go through the same thing. He has all these things going on. You never stop. You're always looking for the next thing. And What's, you, but what, it's what is that? It's so much fun, and it's such an ego blast. It was. It's an ego blast. I remember the first time I was on this little radio station outside of Pittsburgh, and I had two buddies 
and we're working class guys, you know, and they tagged along with me and I had to go to some event, a sock hop or something, a bunch of little adolescent kids there, you know, and they started asking me for my autograph. And my buddy's like, whoa, get a load of this guy, you know, all that. And then they started asking them for their autographs because they didn't know who any of us were. <laughs> so, so there is that ego blast, that, that, that rush that you get from people saying, and I ha did you do any time on radio? Two time. I've done time in a few places, but we yeah. can't talk about that here. Okay. Go ahead. But, but on radio, <laughs> she's hot today, kids. Uh, on radio, there is a certain insidiousness to radio. It, it insinuates, maybe that's a better word, into your life. And, and when you run into a person that you've listened to every morning, for example, in, in rush hour traffic, and you meet the person, it's, or, or, or when that would happen to me, somebody would come up to me and meet me. And I would say, why the hell do they know me? I'm on radio. But they knew for whatever reason. And they start talking to you like they know you. Hey, that thing you did this morning with the guy that came over and <laughs> fell in the man. Hey, that would. No, hello. How are you? Just a conversation starts. And I love that. I love the fact that, uh, that I got to be the luckiest kid in town. Came here in 69. Went to work for Golden West Broadcasting, KSFO. And everything just... Worked out good. Went to L.A., did a lot of sitcoms, uh, animation, cartoon voices. And uh, here I am still looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that it note, never stops. Terry needs a job. Anybody have any ideas? Those of you way in the future, forget about it. But okay? he's got a lot of projects going on. We're going to hold you to it. Okay. Do you want to sign off with your favorite radio sign off? Oh, God, I haven't thought of this in years. This is an amalgam of all the radio sign offs of my radio heroes. And your favorite characters. You can do more than one. Oh, okay. No, but this, this one takes about a half an hour. Okay, no. We I, used to, I got off at 10. Time. I usually started this at 9.30. No, it goes like this. Well, I see by the clock on the wall, there's a fly on it. Time to... I see by the clock on the wall, there's a fly on it. Time for me to wish you a fond adieu and to be fan, fondue. May, Again. I see by the clock on the wall, there's a fly on it. Time for me to wish you a fond adieu and a... A fond to do and to be fondue. Me, I have nothing but blue skies, green lights, take your time, not your life. Beat your rugs, not your wife. Right if you get work, hang by your thumbs, bye bye and buy bonds. Wow. That was about 10 guys Fred Allen, Bob and Ray. Bob and Ray's was hang by your thumbs, right if you get work. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. I'm just awesome. I'm just overwhelmed by your enthusiasm and your, your gentleness and your expertise at interviewing you are awesome i have i have loved your work from the moment i heard you and you don't remember this because this was years ago a million because years ago I'm too old she said no because it was a means. long time ago and that is that dos file thing but you were one of my guests at kgo back in the days of am san francisco that oh, yes. that is a million years ago and i just i God. just um, i think my nanny brought me in for that probably so who yeah. was your co-host were, were you I had many. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I was the fill-in. Oh, I see. But that's, I see. that's why I was. I was. How did I behave? Funny. You were funny. Was I? I was like, oh my god, this is Terry McGovern. I was so impressed. I was like, Terry McGovern. It's this like is all new. This is all news to me. I had no idea. <gasps> it's okay. It's all right. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Much